but I'm going to hit record so that we can all be recorded. We're on recorded, so don't say anything that you can't say. All these people can see you right now. We're putting that up or we put the, no, let's put your thing up there, but then you can uh, share screen onto the, the Zoom I'm waiting. I'll make you a code. That's all right. <laughs> uh oh, gotta move it down. Thank you for your patience, everybody. We really appreciate it. We do want to let you know that we'll keep everybody muted until there's time for open discussion. And even then, we'll only unmute folks that have their hands up so that we can have some, some decorum and some, some Robert's rules within the meeting. Mr. Greenwich, are you on the Zoom? I'm sorry? Are your computer on the Zoom so no. I can, okay. Shall I? Yes, please. We, that's how you're going to be able to share your screen. Well, yeah, no, because they're not going to be able to see. Me. Mr. Welton, do you want to ask the people who have, who don't have a name on the Zoom to share their name? Absolutely. If, if you could, please, anyone that is on the Zoom, we need to see your first and last name, please. After several incidents of Zoom bombing during COVID, I am especially paranoid about that. So please make sure that your name, first and last, are on your Zoom. You can change that by clicking on your screen, right clicking, and then rename. I, to my knowledge, it's not a requirement, but it's the last time we didn't require it. We had some major issues with uh, with a Zoom bomb. We don't do that for board right? I don't know what policy is, but honestly, the last board they asked you to write the name and email. Or yeah. yeah. We're still yeah. writing any name. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. I don't know. I was just so, saying, make sure everybody like yeah. has. If you go to kind of the school district, kind of thing. I don't want people to have to figure out what to do. Go. Uh, all right, well, let me just send it. That's why I unplugged my, my thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I think I'm going to do it. I think i uh, yeah. That can be live having computer problems today. We should have it. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. We had a property. That's, 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 Birchman Greenwich. Yeah. Uh, 
Every time we go to the So now, thank you. I saw it. Exactly. I was just going to have this play in the background. But as a, oh, you weren't going to actually. No. <laughs> okay. Is that right. what you were looking for? No, I thought you, when you brought it in, I thought you were going to do the actual presentation. No, I was just going to have, I was going to play it over the background so oh, okay. they can see it and just kind of talk a little bit. Cool. Well, then, then you don't need to share it then. It'll just be in the back. Okay. I didn't realize all that. Okay. Well, oh, good. Sure. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start talking to the people because we're 10 minutes in. All right. Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you to the to the folks on Zoom for being here. We appreciate it very much. Um, and to the 20 or so folks in the room, we appreciate you being here. As you know, this is the third meeting. Fifth. Fifth total meeting here, and this was the first time we presented it in the auditorium and then at the board meeting regarding the expansion of Dixon's cell phone policy into the high school for next year and receiving feedback on that from parents. So, Mr. Greenwich and Ms. Manns are here to get your feedback. We, we value very much the, the opinions and the feedback of parents, staff, and community members and all stakeholders. Uh, I'm going to stop talking now so that they can then start talking. All right. So as we uh, are going to just kind of talk a little bit. Um, so we've already kind of done this presentation. So I'm just going to have it rolling in the background. So feel free to read it as it goes through. It's got some graphs, it's got some good information. But more than anything, at this point, uh, we just wanted to hear your voice. Uh, we wanted to be able to... Um, take from this meeting and our other meetings, just the ideas, put it together so that we can present the board with um, what our thoughts about the expansion of our cell phone policy would look like, um, how it might be implemented. And so really that's what this is an opportunity to do. Yeah. And um, could you roll back to the slide that shows this option? It's just so much that. It's so much you can ask. And if that's what we're here. So we want, I mean, I could make it slower. Yeah. I just. As he's doing this, just keep in mind that the conversation about cell phones is not new. I'm sure that if you've been in the district long enough, you know, that the you. conversation is something that is revisited every year. So for this particular year, um, cell phones um, came back or was brought back to discussion because we had a staff meeting. And at any staff meeting, you know, people bring concerns. So staff said, hey, can we address cell phones again? Because we are still having issues in our classroom. It's a distraction. And as you look through this, you'll see some of the uh, reasoning behind wanting to have some type of policy for cell phones. It's a distraction, um, academic dishonesty, and et cetera. So the discipline committee met for weeks. It wasn't just a one-time um, meeting. They met for weeks. They got together, they talked about a plan, they sent out surveys to the teachers, and with that came um, a plan or a presentation that was presented to the board, um, to the you know, to the committee at the board meeting, to you all, and we're just trying to come up with a solution that is going to benefit all stakeholders. So this is something that was brought to our attention from the teacher. It started bottom up. It was not a admin decision to say, hey, we want to get rid of cell phones. No, the teachers brought it to us, and they took the time to sit there and meet in the discipline committee to say, hey, this is what the issues we're facing. Can you please try to take this to the board to try to help us with coming up with some type of solution that's going to benefit us as well as the students? So we are really looking for your feedback to really come up with a solution that will be beneficial. And we heard um, over the last couple of weeks about um, some concerns and really heard a lot of good suggestions about what we can do. I mean, we're hoping that um, this will be, you know, the meeting. And we, we did actually have um, some conversation with students, and, I'm, and I think some students might be on the, the Zoom call today, about what we can do moving forward. So, again, there has not been a decision made. 
Uh, we're hoping to get some feedback from everybody, all the stakeholders, so that we can present something to the board next month in uh, something that's going to work for everybody. So we're hoping to get people's feedback, and we'll take notes on that. So, um, <laughs> So this time we'd like to just open it up. Yeah. Like, let's open it up and let's have a conversation. Um, if you have questions that we can address, we're happy to address those questions, but we're also um, happy to just hear your thoughts. Instagram just did have something to say. Yes, sir, please. My name is Jordan. Uh, I just come here today um, to just share my thoughts on things. Um, it's not just my thoughts either. I have talked to uh, other people, my school and faculty on uh, their events as well. Um, and I just want to ask questions that think about the way that I can uh, go about and think of um, one of the uh, things that I was supposed to be taken at the beginning of the day. Um, the first thing uh, I have a problem with is uh, one is being too big for the machine and everything. Um, because I think I don't know how that got to work. I know it's like 10 hours to do it faster. Um, and how much that has to come with me. Uh, and also, another thing is on the level as students, when you have to put it, it's nice to enter the building and the first thing that has to be is to pick up a box that we've never said about that. So, like, the first thing being asked is people know how to listen to learn. The first thing being asked is to be able to do it. That's not, I'm not going to set it up against the machine, it's just a problem. I feel like it's really, really, really good to say, um, especially not even the right thing to do. Um, uh, and so, other ideas for phones um, some teachers are using this for one being an assist. She has very good policy on how the phones in class. Um, most of the respect of all the things that I'll speak to. Other teachers are very good at this. There are problems with that, so teachers have to take care of their problems. Some students are going to fight about it. And science taking away the classes, so then it and I think that it is nice that we're trying to address phones, uh, but I feel like that government we also really have a problem in place where it's written at us. I feel like the punishments uh, for that are too advanced. I feel like um, it gets to have um, so many different problems. It's all that we have. And it's just one of those things where it's like, if, if we want to have policy about our thing, we can come in and we can even see it in the previous stuff that we have. Like, just right out of the suspension. I know I don't want to see suspensions, and a lot of parents are going to see, especially with these things. But the thing is, is we have to, at some point, we want to break down with the parents, and you can't just give them to all the training that you eventually They're going to just notice that it's not good. So I feel like at some point that uh, people are going to be put out and put down the door and just tell them here, but your kid's not listening. That's too good. Um, <laughs> If you do, if you, if you, if you don't like the idea of you know, suspension or suspensions, um, and if the final thing that you need to do is put it on the table, if at all possible, I feel like it would be more beneficial if you could see your own classroom. On your classroom, um, because we can do the problems for other classes that I noticed is two different things I had. Because of looking at those, their diction policies, 
And uh, I feel like not enough people are teaching the dangers of uh, being able to do that. I feel like this is going to be addressing gender groups. Mm -hmm. That would be a better solution than the separation of issues after themselves. If there's a quarter of the danger that we can get the it would probably be kind of somebody who likes to cry and say, okay, there's no problem. And I know that's more of a parent problem, but some parents, that's a lot of parents need to know. Some parents are good at parents. All of them are good at parents, and all parents need children. So um, I feel like it's sometimes like schools as well. Job at the end of the day, it's a good thing. Thank you. Can I ask you what group you're in? Mr. Grinch, Ms. Manns, we've had several requests for uh, someone to just go through the data slides again. You don't need to go through the whole presentation, but there are folks online that would like to see the data just presented. If you could go through just those few slides, then we could get back to having it roll in the background. Sure. Are we speaking specifically to the data pulled from teachers, or are we talking about the discipline? Uh, I think both of those data points are what's being requested. Sir. Okay. Um, it's kind of hard to see all of that. Uh, so one of the data points that we looked at was the number of referrals. Um, now I pulled this, I pulled this for the first presentation we did. Um, so that was at, on, uh, February 6th. At that point we had 845, uh, total referrals, 192 of them were for repeated cell phone violations. Those are the ones that are not just the, uh, hey, put your phone away. That's a repeated, hey, put your phone away, put your phone away. Don't put your phone away, I'm going to refer you. Okay, I'm going to refer you. So that's what that represents. Um, and then as far as what that looks like in total, now, one of my teachers at the last meeting said that they felt like that wasn't a true representation based on the number of times they deal with cell phones. But I'll get, that has a data point as well. Um, I don't know if that's this financial impact is necessary. Oh, I'm not going to go over that. that. Yeah. Um, so this is the poll data from teachers. Uh, <laughs> first one was asking whether or not they would like to see a cell phone environment at school. Um, there were 62 respondents, uh, which is most of our teaching staff. Uh, 77% said yes, they would. Um, but I mean, I'm willing to point the counterpoint is that 14% say they had no feelings positively or negatively on this matter. Um, so we are looking at 15% of our teachers that don't really have an opinion out of the 62 respondents. Uh, how many times a class period uh, do you address cell phones? Uh, so almost 20% uh, said 10 or more times uh, on a given day. Uh, six to 10 times is 35.5%. So as you go around the, the pie chart, uh, about 15% say one or two times a day they're dealing with it, which honestly, if you're talking about something one or two times a day, I would call that a win. Uh, but if you're talking about 10 or more times a day, uh, and that being roughly what, 52% of our teachers, uh, that's problematic. How much time, and I think this is an important one because this goes to how much time that teacher is taking away from the lesson, the progression of the lesson, um, learning loss in terms of how many times you can get to students and answer questions. How much time do you spend with it? More than six minutes of a class period. But the reason why I chose six minutes is because um, if you look at a 42 minute class period, six minutes represents a pretty good chunk. And if you think about the progression of a lesson, you know, when you talk about the the warm up or the do now, if you will, of the lesson, the intro, uh, for those of us a little bit older, it was the anticipatory set. Okay. And then when you talk about the actual direct instruction, um, that six minutes is probably not coming from the seat work. That six minutes is probably coming from the direct instruction. If I had to, if I had to guess, teachers, please feel free to weigh in on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're talking about more than six minutes and we're talking about about 40% of our teachers are saying that five minutes or so, so that's that about five minutes. And when you look at that, now you're talking about 76% of our teachers are saying that about five minutes or more of time is being spent on cell phones in class. So then I put this one on Linkert scale because I thought, you know, that's kind of easy to see. What side do 
uh, staff members fall on. How problematic are they in your classroom? All right, out of 67 respondents, okay, I had four that said, eh, not so much, all the way up to 22, which represents 32%, that said it's the biggest thing I face in the day, the biggest problem, if you will, I face in the day. Um, and that's kind of the data points that we really looked at. Yeah, I but, think that's great. If you want to put it back on, uh, on, loop. on loop, that would be wonderful, sure. sir. Mr. Wilson, you have one online with a hand raised. Perfect. I'm just going to get this back to where. There we go. All right. Ms. Gottschalk. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm sorry. I could barely hear that student on my Zoom, so I don't know exactly what was said. Um, so if I repeat anything, I apologize. Um, my daughter's a junior there, and she has teachers that do not even allow them to pull out their phones. And she has teachers that allow them to use their phones when they're done with their work. I don't know how we can correlate middle school with high school. Middle school is middle school. And a high school, they're supposed to be somewhat treated like adults. And I personally feel like accountability is a problem. And it's numerous things, but we're on cell phones. So I feel like if they're doing what they're not supposed to be doing, again, we're punishing those that are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I have a huge ordeal with safety and the world is a crazy place. And I don't want my daughter to be in a situation ever where she can't pick up her phone and be able to call me in any situation. And so having the phones completely away from them and not being able to be able to contact home. And, and I've come to that school and I've come down the hill and I've had that kiosk not even stop me. They've lifted the gate and I drove right in. So I feel that there's nobody telling me that nothing can happen in that school and my daughter shouldn't be able to get a hold of me. And so my proposal was they have to drop them in a box or something, turn them off in the classroom. So at least they're accessible after class or during class in case of an emergency. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Green. Well, let's, let's get some other folks. Let's do a swap off in person and on, online. Someone else in person? I saw that hand first. Can we, I'm sorry. Just to, to the last speaker's uh, point, can we have in person speakers go closer to the microphones that can hurt? I love that idea. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. So the, the whole owl situation is, is the microphone. Okay. Sure, that's fine. Okay. So I just to kind of follow up on what she said. So I'm a parent of a uh, 10th grader here, uh, but I'm also faculty at Pitt. So I get them after they leave here. And I mean, it's something we struggle with, obviously, at the collegiate level as well, but it's certainly not going to do me any favors if they're not learning in high school how to manage this, you know, because obviously the next level at college is just the next level of freedom. Um, and, you know, they're having to get themselves to class and do all of these kinds of things as well. So I don't think we're doing the kids any favors by just not helping them learn to manage this reality that we all exist in. Um, so I think like a lot of the other people have said, I also, from the classroom management perspective, right, I know what it's like to try to have to deal with these things. I know Robert has some teachers who do a really good job. I think they have like a shoe holder or something when they, you know, when they walk in, the phones go in there. And same thing, it's accessible. Should we need be, you know, we've already had one day this year where we <laughs> had to flee the building. You know, you guys can't sit there and hand out a thousand cell phones as they're fleeing the building. That's certainly a time when parents need to be getting a hold of. So if they're there in the classroom, but they're not, I mean, I know if I'm sitting in a meeting and I'm bored, I'm on my phone, you know? So, I mean, we get it, but so maybe take them 
away, but not so far away. And, um, you know, let's help them learn to manage this because this problem doesn't end when they graduate high school. They're gonna need these skills to manage in college. I agree, I think, with the young man who said, this, you know, this needs to go to media literacy much earlier on um, as well. Parents need help, kids need help. Um, we're all trying to learn. Chat GPT is absolutely <laughs> the next meeting I'm sure we're going to be having on this. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, like I think most of the parents, not okay with them being taken all day. I do think there is in the room management that can happen that could really help and enforcing the rules that are on the books. You know, if, if kids don't feel like things are gonna be enforced then they're not gonna, they're not gonna follow them. So anyway, just wanted to put in that perspective. Miss Dupree would be your next one on there. All right, Miss Dupree, give me just a sec. Let me find you and go. <laughs> Goddess I got it. I'm trying to figure out <laughs> how to unmute her. Uh, there's my no... right where? That's what I did. Oh, it did. All right, there you go. Miss Dupree, are you there? All right, now she's gone. Where's she going? I think she's gone out of the meeting, actually. Uh oh, All right. that's not good. Oh, she's still there. Ms. Dupreen, can you unmute? There yeah, you I'm here. Okay. Right here. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I totally agree with the mom who just spoke, um, who's also worked at the college. Um, my proposal is to have like cubby holes or some type of um, thing where, like she mentioned, the shoe holder over the door. But each teacher should have a list of the children that's participating in that period um, and make them put, you know, the name with the slot and their cell phone in there. I would not suggest a bucket because you don't want no one's cell phone getting stolen or whatever. Um, my son, Chinez, has the same issue. We've been going around in circles with this, about him, his cell phone, his laptop, and all of that. So I just feel like maybe have like a cubby hole or something with a slot or something where they can put their name in there with their cell phone. Um, and then I charge the office to make sure they, during a crisis, be a, aware of the phones and everything and answer it promptly. Um, but at least the cell phones are accessible and, but they're not on their cell phone during work. I mean, during our school hours, you get what I'm saying? So like a cubby hole, maybe for seventh period, the teacher has the names of all the seventh period students they come in and they turn their each one put their name and their cell phone in their um, slot and then as they get their cell phone return their name to the teacher so that's what i my suggestion all right thank you that was great yes please. thank you so i'm an educator as well my name is jen bender and um I deal with exactly what you're dealing with. Now, my people are a little smaller, um, but it's surprising in my grade level that half the students already have phones and they're not even in fifth grade yet. Uh, and so for me, what I do is I just have a bin on my desk and when they walk in, they get dropped in. Now, there's times throughout the day where a student might say, I need to call my mom, I'm not feeling well, or, you know, it could be a number of issues. And as long as you have good rapport with your students and you can maintain discipline with them, you're it's not, it's not an issue. It's not an issue for my grade level. It's not an issue for my building. There are consequences. The students know it. Um, and I would be interested when I looked at the data and it talked about, I mean, the infractions and such, um, how does that compare to like discipline in general? And like, because there are maybe one or two people, not without getting myself in trouble, that um, may not have as great classroom management. 
And so then that does become a bigger issue, whereas other classrooms there may not be. Um, and so I just curious looking at the data, um, like what you could come from that. So, um, and then keeping up with the consequences, um, like the young man said, if you keep consequences up and they understand that you mean business, you're gonna have a lot less problems. But if you keep pushing off going, if I tell you one more time, if I tell you one more time, well, of course they're gonna keep pushing the button or keep pulling the phone out because you're not holding up your end of the bargain. Uh, and then last would be, what if they, what about the watches? I don't remember hearing anything about that. And like the Apple watches, would that be included in this as well? So again, this is, at this point, this is fact finding, this is conversation. Okay. So um, I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to say no, because at this point, this is still in its pleasure. Because for me, like, I have a child with like a medical condition. Right. And sometimes when he runs out of the house, he forgets to take his medicine. And it's not here at school because he doesn't get to take it during school. Right. And for me, it's important that he has it. And if, if, you know, he can text me and be like, mom, he run up to the school. Like, I totally forgot. So I do. And we need to treat our they're in high school they need they need to have their phones you know what i mean but i would highly suggest it works really well for me the shoe slip thing just come in drop your phone and then if somebody has their phone then you got to follow through Is someone on i'm miss king yep. hi there so when we came out to school in January after Christmas break, I started collecting cell phones from my students. So we have a calculator caddy in my room. So I told them, when you come in to pick up your calculator, please put your phone in that spot. That way I know who has turned them in, who hasn't. Half the kids do it. The other half are like, oh, I don't have my phone today. Oh, you're not getting my phone. You're never getting my phone. And they're just really antagonistic sometimes. And I don't know that I wanna fight that battle every day. I've been trying really hard. I even give the kids an envelope to put their phones in during test day so that I have them in the front of the room. I've had kids in the last two tests caught cheating because they'll put their case in the container instead and then when I go to pass them back out at the, at the end of the test, I realize, oh, there's no phone in there. And that's because they're on their phone cheating on my tests. Um, I've also had kids leave the case for the calculator in the holder. And they're telling me that they're, oh, yeah, they're, they don't have a calculator. They don't have a phone today. And I've caught that one on their phone cheating on my tests. So... Sometimes I see, like, I've been trying really hard to get this academ academic honesty because they're very dishonest at, at times. And it's, it's a long, hard struggle. And there are kids that have two phones. There are kids that just flat out lie and say that they don't have them. And then the next thing, you know, they're on their phones. And then there's other ones that just refuse. They just will not give up their phone and they've walked out of the class. I've written them up. They won't turn them in when they go to in school and they've been suspended because of that. So I think we need a little bit more help than just having the teachers control it each period, because honestly, I've been trying. Thank you. So, yeah, like one of the biggest issues I have is um, when it comes to punishing the masses for the actions of you, that's like all you like as administrators and teachers. If you were speeding down or somebody was speeding around you when you're driving your car, if you got a ticket because of them speeding, you'd feel some kind of way about that. And it's like our kids are ascending into adulthood and they shouldn't be punished for the actions of other individuals. Because every student that goes to the school is an individual. Like, you know, they're not a team. They're not a cohort. They're an individual student that's, you know, going to ascend to an individual adult and do their thing, whether it be education, whatever. Um, and you, if you're having an issue with certain individuals, discipline the certain individuals. And, you know, even to, like, um, when I, when I, went to basic training, there was a whole laundry list of things that were contraband. 
if you got caught with any of them, it was lights out, nights out, like you were done. And it was a horrible thing if you got caught with contraband. No cell phones. You only got small amounts of phone privileges. I'll never forget the day I've seen that I saw my first basic training selfie. And now, the, you know, the Department of Defense and the military now allows individuals to have cell phone time when they're done, you know, in the classroom time, you know, when they're on their free time to, you know, enjoy that privilege. And if they can manage something like that in an institution where everything was blanketly banned for the last 80 years, and they realize that, you know, young people need that communication, that that's how they communicate amongst each other. And that's just what they do. And if they can, you know, correlate it into their regimen and their day, then why can't we? And just if there becomes an issue with a student, enforce the code of conduct. Like it, it's on the books. Like you have everything written down, discipline. And if they, you know, keep disciplining them till they comply, that's a, I, I don't know what else to say. But you know, every student should not be at the mercy of everyone else's inability to behave themselves and control their actions as you know young adults. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hey, there you go. <laughs> um, just to kind of bounce off of the, the gentleman that just spoke, I would argue that in most cases, I would totally agree with where you're coming from. We shouldn't punish the masses. But I just kind of did a general survey in my classes this week, and I don't tell kids, hey, you're not allowed having your cell phones. But as I was trying to instruct them, and I did tell them, hey, you need to put your cell phones away, I'm teaching you, 14 out of 19 of my students were on their cell phones not engaged. So that tells me the overwhelming majority are not doing what they should be doing. And I don't know if this is uh, repercussions or I don't want to say repercussions, but is this a reaction to the, the students that I see at the high school that went through the pandemic, that maybe they weren't as um, observed as much at home? Like I know my kids, my own children at home, they were online and learning and engaged, but they were elementary level. Um, the high school kids, uh, I talked to most kids, even from other districts, and it was, I'll log in uh, and do my work whenever I want. So I almost hope that it's a few years out, but I think at this stage, I don't think our children's brains are developed enough to handle putting phones away. Um, but like I said, I normally I'd agree with you, but in this scenario, I just, I can't, I can't sit back and watch a whole group of children, like, choose to not learn. All right, so um, I was asked to share this uh, slide as well. Um, so as I said before, 23% of discipline referrals were where students were asked to put their phone away. However, a large part of that too, or I should say a different subset was if we looked at not just, hey, put your phone away, but what other things have occurred that are specifically related to cell phones. So, for example, fights that are orchestrated through cell phones, uh, where students will text each other to meet up in the bathroom, they'll have their group chats, and then we'll all of a sudden see a mass of students rush to the bathroom because there's going to be a fight. So, while that is not specifically, hey, put your cell phone away, that is still something that is directly related to cell phone use. Um, students that cut class together. So, I'm in this hallway. Students in that hallway, they text each other and say, hey, let's meet at the bathroom at the front of the building, and they take a 15-minute walk up to the front of the building. That ends up being a class cut. Again, that's not directly related to cell phones specifically, but that is something that is cell phone related. Um, this one, I think, for me, is the most problematic because whenever we see fights that occur and students film those fights, and then those fights are shared throughout the day, throughout the week, and even when kids get back after suspensions after the fight, you have kids that still come back with the same energy 
that led to the fight in the first place because they've been re-victimized by that cell phone footage being uh, passed over and over again. Uh, so that's something that also plays in. Um, and then obviously, bullying. For most, for most of us, when we went to school, bullying was something that absolutely happened. Happened during a school day. I got on my school bus, I went home, and that bullying stopped until the next day. Well, now, because they're able to chat at home and then chat during the day, maybe in a different classroom across the hall, across the building, whatever, even sometimes kids come back from boards having had a verbal, dis verbal disagreement, they get back to the building and now they're ready to fight because that bullying is nonstop and consistent and persistent. Um, so that also goes through that. So when I pulled the data on 27, there were 861 referrals, 629 of those had some relation to cell phones. So all of these kinds of things, plus the ones that were just cell phone violations. Uh, so that represented 73% of all referrals had a link in some way, whether direct or indirect, to cell phone use. Uh, so that was what I was asked to share. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So can Anyone I else in the building? Yes, ma'am. Please. Parent hat today, so different hat. Parent hat. Okay. <laughs> Out of those numbers, how many of those 23% ended up with a parent meeting after the incident has happened? So once we've told the child, take your phone, I mean, you put your phone away, you have it. Okay, put your phone away, you have it. How many of those have had a parent come in and had that conversation? Your child consistently is using their phone in class. And sure. the reason I asked, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I've had a person email me and said they asked teacher, when the teacher said, hey, your child continues to have the phone, they were told, oh, we're not allowed to take phones for the board policy, which I'm completely shocked by. So I'm just wondering, where's the parent engagement in this data? Okay, so it's not reflected in this data. Um, and honestly, I mean, we could look at logs, if you will, uh, on how many, because, so here's what I will say. For every one of my referrals, I require parent contact, whether it's through phone, through email. So that does not necessarily mean parents have come in, but that does require that there is parent contact for every one of the referrals we get. But so it's obviously can... correct if the phone's taken. Isn't there supposed to be a parent meeting about that situation once the phone is confiscated? Right. So we don't we yeah. don't have our teachers confiscate phones. Okay. No, I mean once you once they come to you with a referral, you've taken the phone. So the parents are not coming in to get that phone off of you. The child's going back home with that phone, so there is no no meeting after that. No phone, no phone is confiscated during this. If the, the referral is written. And mainly, and mainly when I refer to a student that is repeatedly using the turn in their phone, it's usually escalated, meaning that they get to the point where they're being disrespectful to the teacher. So it's no longer about them refusing to turn in their phone. Now they're becoming insubordinate. Now they're becoming disrespectful to the teacher. So that's where it's escalated. So it's not about taking the phone away from the student. Um, when we call the parent, the parent comes up that day and pick up the student. Or the student goes to ISS, so you don't necessarily take the phone and just talk to students. Yeah. And then my second question: um, How were the students here issued lockers? The reason why I'm asking if they put their phone in the locker instead of you know confiscating it, or instead of putting it into the shoe holder, how does that process work? Because we have tons of lockers. Are they using them? Not using them? I mean, my son doesn't use it. Mm -hmm. yes. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. If I had to guess, I would say probably 90% of our students don't use their lockers. Yeah, okay. And my hand would put their phone in there and leave it out of possession or out of their hands. And that's what I'm trying to get into. We're, we can't even get them in a locker. Nah. Now we're saying put it into a bin. I just feel like maybe there's a there's something. The problem with us taking them, they're thousand dollar phones. And then if it's cracked or missing or broken, all of a sudden you broke it. It wasn't broken, I gave it to you. Now we're responsible for thousand dollar phone. I don't want to touch any kid's thousand dollar phone and be responsible for it. But they can say the same thing if we put the phone in a bin. When I put that's the phone in the bin, that's what I mean. It's kind of so the policies we're we're filling out here, just being cautious of it. We're collecting phones and iPhones. I don't know how much they are between Android, sorry, y'all. <laughs> <But, laughs> 
But if a child says, oh, you know what? Well, I put my phone in there. It wasn't retracted. I put it into your bed and now it's broken. Yeah, that's what we're now you're going to tell the parent, I don't know if it was or if it wasn't. Now the district's responsible yeah. for an iPhone and I this because and Because on the policy, the, the current policy, one of the first sentences says the administration is not responsible. Oh, okay. but Absolutely. But, but Absolutely. That's, a, that's, a, that's concerning. Yeah. So if they can't take it away. They, if they can't take it away, if they're not responsible. Correct. I think that's that's what I'm trying to get to. We so, say we're not responsible, but then we take it. We are responsible, so we would need to rewrite that word along with this policy. Correct. I was here the last. My name is Melissa Scaris. I had how many kids go through? Three children, three boys go through this, and I have a tenth grader right now. And um, in ninth grade, um, phone use was a problem in two classes. I went to parent-teacher conferences. We went home, and I took care of it. Okay. That's it. Thank you. I don't need no. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Um. Last time I was here, I said I was talking with my twenty-five-year-old graduate from here, and he said, "But how about a contract?" I can tell you that if I'm called here to come get him and his cell phone, he will do it once. I won't beat him up, but he will be punished. <laughs> but, uh, he will be punished. But right. it's just like. In a way, it's like, well, we have to them let, let them flourish and they can drive a car at 16, but God forbid, would they use their phone? I'm like, dude, your responsibility with my car is the same with the cell phone. And I, like last time I said, we were nine parents, a thousand students. I told my husband, for me, don't speak, if I have to. I'm French, I don't listen. I'm French, I don't listen. But the problem I had is that we're, um, it's just like, we can't get it both ways. We can't, and I totally agree with you. Why get punished the ones, we're not the Romans, we don't get the number 10, you know, you die, because we lost a war, whatever. Why punish the good one? Because then the good ones are gonna act out too. If I'm punished, then I'm gonna do, the, you know, the, and it's just like, and that's not the teacher's responsibility. I also was an educator from A, first through A, that's not my job to take care of, I mean, to, I'm here to teach. I'm not responsible of the phone. That's not my job. All right. So that's, and we were talking about a contract. Alexander and I were talking, he said, well, if you involve the parents and you make them sign with the student, with the administrators, say, I will uphold the policy. And if I don't, these are what's gonna happen to me. Okay, hey, you signed it. You're a big boy. You're in ninth grade. You're not at Dixon anymore. You're not in fifth grade. This is your name, your mom's name or your dad's name or grandpa, whatever. And this is our name. You follow the rule. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm like, I'm so done. Thank you. Oh, there's a little luck. Uh, Madam okay. Albright has had to raise her hand. Now, Mr. Jewell. So, we have names or don't have names? There is a hand. There it is. There's Madam Albright. Oh. She's on there. All right. A. Hello. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, yeah. Thank you to all the people who have. Um, voiced their opinions that it's very interesting to hear all of those different ideas. Um, I do just want to say that I, um, like Miss King, I have also tried um, different ways to collect phones in the classroom. Um, going back to last year, e even, and well, probably before that, I've done shoe boxes. Um, I've done, um, put it on my desk. Um, because th that's the other thing is they don't want to be far from their phone. It, like there, there is a look of panic in a child's eyes when I say, "I'm gonna need you to put your phone." First of all, they don't ever put it away. So just so you know, th because they're uh, addicted, I guess um, they can't keep their hands out of their pockets. They can't keep their hands out of their laps. So I don't feel like they have. And I'm I'm saying they because it's everybody in my classroom. Um, just so you know, 
So they have a look of panic in their eyes. And I say, well, okay, fine. Okay, shh, you know, calm down. How about you just put it on the windowsill? That way you can see that it's there and I'm not touching it and nobody else is touching it. No matter what we do. So now the kids would just get up and walk to the windowsill. Like if they don't have the self-control, this is what I am seeing. Finally, last year, the only thing I could get to work and I exhausted, by the way, it's exhausting. It's so not teaching, has just absolutely nothing to do with actually teaching the child the stuff that we're supposed to teach them in class, nothing. I um, bought a ton of food, a ton of snacks and brought it in. And I tried everything from, if you put your cell phone on my desk for uh, all five days of the week, you can get a treat. That actually worked for some kids because it was voluntary, right? Well, if you make it voluntary, if you, what are we always told? You got to give them an incentive. Okay, well, the kids always want snacks. So I did that for a really long time and spent a lot of money on snacks and spent a lot of time writing down the kids' names or, no, my, but I put my phone on your desk. Didn't you see it? Um, no, honey, I wrote everybody's name down. I, your phone was not on. It's just... So nothing has worked for me and I have tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. Um, so I guess that's my input. Thank you, Ms. Albright. You're welcome. So I am, I support the school with the cell phones. I do. We have to understand as parents, the parents are here are the ones that are going to have a contact with the kids. The parents who are not here is the ones that cause the problems. Oh, I can't, you can't hear me? Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't got a loud voice. <laughs> so what we talk about is parents in this in this room came here because we're concerned and we care about our kids. We're the ones who are going to be involved in our kids' lives. So most of our kids are not going to be ones causing the problems. But you have to understand it's a safety issue that involves all the kids in the school. It's not just the ones, it's a safety issue. The other piece that is, is that, do we have data from the middle school? That how it curved down? See, that would be information. The data that happened when they started doing, implementing that policy at the middle school, you will see the data and how it, how the, it decreases all the events. Once somebody gets a cell phone in hand, it causes more problems, not just to the kids around, but to the district in general. That information gets out, it goes to the public, goes to news cases. We've been dealing with this stuff for three or four years now. So something has to be done. We have to be on board. We have to be supportive of us. So it's a give and take. The parents have to understand we're not trying to punish the good kids, but we're also trying to keep them safe at the same time. And that's one of the problems we're going to have. You know, if you don't do something, this continues. We're going to start seeing reports like that. There's something that has to be done. So we have to look at that as a be not as punishment to our kids, you know, but our kids got to be adults. There's places in the real world you can't use your cell phone in, period. You know, you go to concerts, now they take them. So, you know, those are the, you know, the difficulties that we're dealing with now. And it's, you know, so I want to come with a solution and, and less about complaining about this is what happened to our kids because it's, you know, Something's got to change. You know, when you're on both sides of the fence, something has to change. You know, I don't expect teachers to be responsible for that. It's not their job. So it has to be done at the, you know, at, at the administration level, at the door, where the administration is responsible, and that cuts down on the responsibility of the teacher. Because I can tell you now, kids are going to cuss you out. They don't want their phone. They're not going to give them to you. My daughter will give her phone up. I'm sure your daughters will get it for you your, and your sons. But the people who are not here, they're not giving them up. And that's where most of the problems come from. But in the same way, then if we're the parents who are, whose kids are going to comply, then the parents of the kids who are not here, those kids are not going to comply because the parents don't care. Absolutely. So having a, a, a new policy with new punishment, unless you hit the parents with this, um, you need to come get your kid in his phone right now. Well, I'm at work. Guess what? It's a safety issue for a school, the other kids. 
come now. Well, then parents are gonna say, I don't have the car, I don't have the bus, and it's gonna, we're gonna have a new policy and it's not gonna work. Well, man, I don't know, the, you know, that's the reality. That's the fact. We are, we know that's gonna happen. We already know that's gonna happen, period. We know that's going to happen. So what do we do about it? We, we, we ask the teachers to take them? No. It's not their job. They ask me down the door. And if they take them at the door, yeah. like how, how is that going to overwhelm security? Because we've already had problems with contraband getting in, babes get in, everything gets in. It it's inevitable that a lot of stuff gets past security. So if a kid refuses to give up their phone, you have a thousand kids trying to shuffle through the door, get their bag screened, get their person screened. I agree with you. It's like you try to implement something in the middle of the year. Yeah, there's always a problem. I expect everybody to be responsible for their job. No, and if I respect everybody to be responsible for their job. That's what their job is. Their job is to make sure that things don't get in the building. Hello. Hello, Ms. Davis. Hi. Um, yeah. First thing with the Dixon thing, I don't think you can compare Dixon to the high school comparing 
I mean, especially with all the problems that they had at Dixon over the last how many years with turnover with principals and everything else. That's completely, totally different environment down there than there is at the high school. Two, this is my third and final kid to come through the high school. My oldest is 10 years older than my youngest. So I have been going through the whole cell phone policy thing for years. And no one has ever really enforced the policies that have been in place. So until we enforce the policies that are in place continuously, nothing's ever going to change. Also, and until administration enforces policy, cell phone policies with the staff that's there, the students aren't going to follow it. Because when the students see the teachers on their cell phones, they're going to think it's okay for them to be on their cell phones. And when they go to things like pep rallies and they go into the auditorium for different things and they're being asked questions that are being read off of cell phones instead of being written down on paper, they're going to think it's okay to be on their phones themselves. So when the teachers are there and the staff is there to set an example for the students, the students are going to follow that example. Also, I have seen how this world has changed since I went to Woodland Hills 30 years ago till now. I would feel a hundred times better having my child have her cell phone on her than not on her. Nor would I trust security to handle my child's phone. Especially when I just came to that school a week ago. Came through the little dollhouse that was built for security. And the guard was in there sleeping. And the gate was up. So any Tom, Dick, or Jerry can get through that school because I personally know firemen who can tell you that those windows, no matter what you say, can get broken. There is so many different ways that you can get stuff into that school. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be the kids in those classrooms that are going to get the 911 calls out should something happen. Thank you. Hi, do you need me to come to the front or can I be heard again? Yeah, if you could, just so sure. people online can hear you. Um, so I'm Courtney Boone. I've got three children here at the school. Uh, my husband's also here. So I'm on both the receiving end and I'm on both sides of this, this discussion from an experience perspective. I have two kids who understand and comply with policy. And I have one who is incredibly challenged by policy. Um, I think it's the positive way to say that um, <laughs> candidly. And, um, and I will tell you, I, I'm really a mixed mind on this. I like, I know what would be easy for him and not beneficial for the sisters. I, I know what would be, but I have lots of questions about the data that you've shown us and kind of like some follow on to get some information out of you. Cause I feel like you want to hear from us, which I need to tell you. Um, I sent a friend a picture of the last time I was at a, like in meetings to get information. And it was, it was me being very, very angry at the administration because the decision had been made before we all walked in the room and you wanted to hear from us, but you didn't want to hear from us. So I appreciate the fact that you are listening to and, and seeking a dialogue, because I think that's incredibly important. Um, because to the parents' perspective, we're the ones that are going to help you enforce whatever rule comes our way. Uh, and we want to do that. But you said in there, in some of your data, you talk about Penn Hills, Ringgold, Washington has a no cell phone policy. I'd like to understand how they worked it, implemented it, went through that process. I'd like to understand, because I was part of the experience at the door of Dixon and saw quite honestly the chaos at Dixon um, and how you would want to control the chaos if you're going to do this. Like, how are you going to go about it? Uh, the other is, is that you're gathering all the data. You're going to put together a recommendation. How are you going to socialize that recommendation between when you gather the recommendation and you present the recommendation? So I know I asked like three big sets of questions. Um, I would love to have information come from you as opposed to just us you fielding the questions from us. Is that okay? Sure. And Good candidly, question. again, like 
I know we all just want one kid to not have his phone. <laughs> and I wish I could take it from him. I mean, I, I'll be honest. Like, it's not, it's not an easy feat on either side. So. All right, so your first question was, I'm sorry, help me again. So your first question is about Penn Hills, Ringgold, and Washington having no phone policies. What does that look like for them? Like, how are you benchmarking that if you're going to share that data with us? So in, in total transparency, that was just these are districts who have implemented no phone policies. I can also tell you that I have had a couple of conversations with a couple of people at Penn Hills. Um, and part of the conversation was around how many students they use the Yonder College. Okay. So I'll, I'll be honest, I would never ask for a Yonder College simply because of the problems that they've created versus the cost versus the benefit. Can uh, you, I, I'm not familiar with it. So can you elaborate on that? Sure. There are magnetically sealed pouch. Kid puts phone in pouch, seals pouch. There's a magnet at the end of the day. You open your pouch, you take your phone out. Okay. So if you do a quick Google search on how to open a yonder pouch, there are like 10 different ways to open a yonder pouch. Um, some of which are noisy, some of which are messy. And one of which is pretty darn easy. And I'm sure our kids would find that real, real quick. <laughs> so I would never even suggest that. Certainly it would cost because they, they pitched us, it would cost around $30,000 of cost at the high school alone to have the under college for our students. So in my mind, it's a, that's a non-starter. Yes, ma'am. But you said last meeting that it was over $36,000 like yeah. referral. So Correct. that would be $6,000 in our pocket. If they, if I see it that way. True story. <laughs> However, again, given given how easy, I'm, to be honest, if you go to Home Depot, and you get some neo neodyme magnets, you can have one in your pocket, yeah. open your own yard. It's probably not a one for one exchange on cost. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so there's that. Uh, in terms of some of the discipline data, honestly, I don't know how. I know in some places it has been effective in terms of reducing discipline and an amount of, I can't give you hard numbers right now, if I'm honest. But I do know there's been like those blanket statements of reduced referrals and increase in social emotional learning and ability to communicate and seeing our kids happier because but you can't put a you can't put a number on happy right i mean i guess you can do it on scale in theory but that'll be that um so i can't really give you that other than to say we would not be the first to do it and our kids are probably not the same kids at Ringgold. And I mean, we're similar to Penn Hills, but I'm just going to be honest and I'm just going to toot our own horns for a second. I think our team, and I'd put our team against any team anywhere in terms of the amount of movement we've had in a positive direction in the school over the last two years. So I'm just going to throw that out there. So I don't want to really compare us to them because they're not us. Um, your second question. So my second question was, if you were going to a collected at the door situation, how are you going to improve upon the experience that occurs at Dixon, which is, I'm going to say it, hot mess is a good description. Um, it's just, it's not, you're, you're, it's, a, it's a real burden on that security team to get it right. Sure. So how would you propose going forward with that? So the first thing that I would do is I would go see, I, so when I was an AP at Langley and PPS, Again, we're talking middle school scenario, but I was an AP at Langley. And so I saw how we did it. I would go to Dixon to see how they do it. And then I would talk to them and say, what are some things that work well? What are some things that need to be improved on? One of the things that I see just as a forethought <laughs> is just the, the collection could be problematic, but I think more in terms of, okay, so how do we redistribute? I see yeah. that as, as the bigger issue, just honestly. Mm -hmm. But again, I think using though using their example and improving on their model, um, I think is is how we would go about it. I can't give you a solid. This is how we would do it because again, if you're going to say that that is a hot mess, I don't want to replicate a hot mess here. I mean, it's a challenging situation on both certainly, sides. Certainly, I can okay. imagine. 
So I actually have a follow up to the first question and the third question. Okay, let's so do the third the, question, then we'll follow up. So Just the so I third can... question was, you're going to create a plan and then you're going to present it to the board. Will you socialize that plan before you go to the board? So like, because you're doing a great job of seeking input, would you like, would you be socializing the plan before you like, because you said like next month you want to go, like you want to put together the plan and then take it to the board. Would you be socializing that plan to the community before you take it to the board? So, I e. getting a second round of input. So yes. And our first step after this, after we collect this data, we're going to put all together, we're going to convene the discipline committee. So we're going to take all this stuff in and say, okay, how do we shake this out? What does this look like? After that, we would then put that together. We would send it to the school board as well as upper admin. Here, take a look. From there, they're going to tweak, I'm sure. And then that, um, as a part of that process, they have to do first, second, is three readings or two readings? So it wouldn't be a board policy change. It'd be just changing the school handbook. Correct. Uh, so they could vote on it in April. It would take a, it's not a policy, three reading. Look up the sorry. Right. Okay, gotcha. But I'm, as so I'm that, sure. Could I recommend? Sure. That when you, that you, I, I can understand the urgency because you need to have this in a school handbook if you're going to change it before August, right? And you need, could I recommend that as you seek the feedback, you come up with a plan, you take that step that you want to take it to the board, but I recommend you do a re-socialization of the plan and seek some feedback on the plan. Because you're doing, I mean, again, you're doing a great job listening. So maybe like another set of eyes. So that, because what you don't want, I suspect, is to feel as though people feel as though you snuck it into a board meeting, because that's was certainly what you don't want to do. So if I could recommend that. Sure. The other question I had was Penn Hills and Ringgold, Washington. I'm sorry, I'll get off the question box. Is it at the high school or at middle school that they have the, like the no, like the no, the no. At, at the high school. At the high school. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Nobody online. Nobody online. Yeah. Can I go after this? So I'm a math teacher. Um, I have 270 days of material to teach in 180 days. Kids deserve their class time back and kids will acknowledge they deserve their class time back. Everybody takes geometry, people. This isn't National Honor Society. This isn't everybody takes geometry. And I have in our community circles for the past couple of Fridays, I said, hey, what, what are you thinking? You know, this is this is being talked about. What's, what are you thinking? Regular geometry kids who themselves struggle to put their phones up, put your phone away, put your phone, okay, okay, well, put your phone away. That's all we do all period. They will tell you that they shouldn't have their phones, that they learn, but they will admit to you, no, you're right. I really should be off my phone. And someone's like, no, but and they're like, no, she can answer your quite a bit. question better than Google's answering. They will tell you that they shouldn't have their phones. I'm not here. I'm not weighing in on, on when to collect it. But here's here's what I know as a classroom teacher. The the amount of arguing that happens in my classroom, the put your phone away. Okay, I will admit. Okay, you cannot get up to charge your phone. You're like Miss Albright said, walking around to go check your phone, have it charging. Jordan said, there's a policy in my classroom. It's a strict policy in my classroom. 95% of the kids comply. But as soon as one kid gets up to charge and check, and then people are knocking at your door eighth period because they want their charger back from another kid. Then they want their headphones back from another kid. That's not your control. That's someone else's control. Then someone's trying to go to the bathroom. They're not going to the bathroom. They're going to get their charger from someone else. These are problems that take truly take away from the education the kids are supposed to be receiving. That has to be the root of these problems and the reason these decisions are being made. I would take questions, but kind of no What is that? What is that? Can I be my Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm Sarah King. I am a special ed teacher. I'm a special ed English teacher in this building. I typically work with kids who are juniors and seniors who school is not their favorite thing. 
and it hasn't, they haven't been successful in school for a long time. And I usually pride myself on my relationships with my kids. That is my bread and butter. Um, today I had a kid, one of the kids with whom I have a phenomenal relationship and I could hear while I was instructing, I could hear this shooting sound happening in the back of my room. <laughs> so I go back and I'm like, what are we doing? And he's playing a shooting game at 7.30 in the morning rather than listening to my instruction, which hurt my feelings a little bit. So I did one of these and I took it. And he got up and he kicked his chair and he yelled at me for a few minutes. And I kind of looked at him and went, do you want me to put it on the charger for you? And then I did. And he looks at me and goes, the only reason I'm not walking out is because it's you. Cool. Thanks for, thanks for that. But the overarching, we're playing a shooting game at 7.30 in the morning and you feel that that's okay. And then you feel that having a temper tantrum in junior English is also okay, is a bigger issue. I will say, and it's one of the data points that we have in this, because I'm on the discipline committee with Mr. Greenwich, is as adults, we make the decision every day to ignore what meeting I'm in and play on my phone, 100%. And the example I used at the last parent meeting was I have never been more embarrassed in my entire professional life as when at district opening in service, Dr. Castagna looked dead at me and goes, don't tell me you want a better position when you won't get off your phone while I'm teaching. And I was like, oh my God. and I, I went home and cried because I'm a highly educated professional and I screwed up. And I know that and I fixed myself, but our kids don't always have the ability to regulate like that. And we do need to teach them. We do need to provide the kind of education like, hey, right now, not time to be on your phone. Right now, it's time to learn. But I'm also fighting at the same end, a shooting game at 7.30 in the morning. So this is the first year that I have ever said, we need help with our phones. And personally, from my classroom perspective, I like to know that my administrators are empowered to help out and that when we write the referral, they have the power to say, no, nah, here's your punishment. And we can do that. Right now, I feel like everyone just kind of feels a little bit handcuffed and we don't necessarily have the right answer. So I love all of this turnout and the fact that this turnout has gotten much better than the last time. So thank you all for being here. <laughs> This time? Yes, ma'am. Just, just so that owl can see you. This one. This one. See the owl? Oh, I see. Yep. That's where the <laughs> microphone is. Okay. Um, good evening. I'm a parent, but I'm also a retired teacher. And um, I want to just ask, why do we need cell phones in the first place when we think about it, right? And also, I think that we need to approach the use of cell phones as an addiction. After the pandemic, um, all of us had to stay in the house and we relied on um, any kind of social media, uh, Zoom, everything to connect with other people. And now, I mean, we're talking about young people that um, we know are going to go out into the world. And as the gentleman said, sometimes the use of cell phones is very, very dangerous. And it's dangerous for the school. Um, I was here one time, there was a fight and there was a parent outside who got a picture of the fight and her child wasn't even in the school and it went all over. And all these parents came for all this chaos and of course the rumors were all over the place. And I just think that the first thing that we need to do is talk about education. That this, these statistics, um, the data should be shared with our students also. I mean, I go to concerts and the first thing they say is turn your cell phone on. And the other thing they say, no pictures. And do you know the adults that actually are texting 
that are actually taking pictures and the distraction of the light when you are trying to concentrate on the concert or the play or whatever, it's an addiction. And we need to educate our students. And the other thing is the cell phones are used for other things other than social media and so forth. It's like a computer. And I remember a librarian in New York who said that that's what she did. She knew that most of the children did not have computers. So she had this workshop and showing the children how they could use their cell phones with other things other than using it for social media and playing games or whatever. So I think that we need to treat it like an addiction with education. And somebody says socialization. I think that socialization should go further, that when you make that decision, that you are telling the students why, and it's not just a black and white, yes, no um, decision, right? I want to read this to you. Um, it says, tech billion, billionaire parenting. Melinda Gates' children don't have smartphones and only use a computer in the kitchen. Her husband, Bill, spends hours in his office reading books while everyone else is refreshing their homepage. <clears throat> the most sought after private school in Silicon Valley, the Wardoff School at the, um, at the Pennsylvania uh, Bands Electronic Devices for the under 11 and teaches the children of eBay, Apple, Uber, and Google staff to make go karts, knit, and cook. Mark Zuckerberg wants his daughter to read Dr. Seuss and play outside rather than use Messenger. Kids, uh, uh, rather than use Messenger kids, Steve Jobs strictly limited his children's use of technology at home. It's astonishing if you think about <coughs> it's the more money you make out, the more money you make out of the tech industry, the more you appear to shield your family from its effects. I'm sorry, it's just kind of blurry. But anyway, I want us to think about that, that we, you know, we use the cell phone and act like it's connected to our hips, and we don't understand that the students, our children, are feeling the same way about these cell phones, but we shouldn't use it as a punishment and say, I'm taking your cell phone, without the education of what the harm is. Thank you. So the one thing that, um, the caveat that I'm getting from like teachers speaking and you know, my takeaway as a parent, what I heard from the two teacher statements that made a statement is, my takeaway was one said the administration won't help us and our hands are tied because security and administration is not watching the hallways and kids are allowed to wander and go get everything. But that, that's what it sounds like to me. And then the other one, you know, was talking about a, uh, a, a child's response to you. Um, she had a spoon out and you walked up and swiped it out of his hand. I did not swipe it out of his hand. I did one of these and he put it in my hand. You said I went up and whoop. Uh-huh. Yeah. He put it in my hand. Yeah. And like, obviously, you know, you can... You know what you conveyed is that you grabbed it out of his hand, and if that was in fact the case, of course he's going to have a negative reaction because it's a negative classroom reaction. And like we as parents have a lot of problems with um, some staff members in this district um, and transparency. We've been told in the past that a little thing was a little dust up, you know, a little problem in the cafeteria, and that we found out through kids having cell phones. And you know that the administration lied, 
and it was an all-out brawl, and it was several of them. And, you know, like I've said before, these cell phones and these cameras keep things on us. Like today, we had a member of our admin throw out a news camera. Like, it's a big secret. We're having a parent meeting, and we have issues with transparency in this district and problems, you know, that Woodland Hills is historic for having. Anybody can pull our safe school reports. Anybody can see our, you know, notable incidences and everything dating back since our inception. Nothing's a secret. Why is one of our administrators kicking out a news camera? And because they've been to every other meeting, you know, we have news cameras up here documenting everything all the time. And then we have administrators, you know, in different buildings on social media, on district um, or district um, credential social media doing activities with the cell phones. Like where there was a uh, thing up here, let's find the security guard that was dressed as an elf or whatever they call it. And we're doing, and we have an admin doing activities with cell phones, but then we're saying, oh, there's such a problem. We need help. There's an issue. But then why, why is admin using them? I think we're talking about two different things. We're talking about cell phones being a distraction in the classroom. I think you're talking about something totally no, different. But if, 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 like, hey, hold on, sir. Hold on a second. I'll let you speak. So we're talking about cell phones being the distraction in the classroom. We're not talking about cell phones being used appropriately or being used for activities. So those are two different things. So let me see one uh, Just to like talk about you, I, I teach calculus and my room's full of AP kids from they grade, grade point averages of 4.0 to 4.5. And today alone, I'm teaching a brand new lesson. And on 10 times, I had to stop the kids and stop my lesson and tell them, you gotta put that cell phone away because you need to notice. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's addiction. And, and they, they thanked me for putting it away. They finally put it away. But it was like some of the kids within two minutes, they're back because it's just so addictive. But again, yeah, there's, there's 4.4 4 kids, AP kids. They're not the kids that don't like to learn. They're, you know, top notch kids who are, you know, get good grades. They pull all AP courses up and down their schedule and, and they're addicted to the phone. So it's not just the kids that don't want to learn, don't like school, and don't want to be here. It's the kids that want to be here and want to learn. It's just that they have trouble putting them away. The caveat like to that is if they if it was such a hindrance to the educational process, as we've heard, those kids wouldn't have 4.0. I couldn't fathom even coming close to a 4.0 or 4.5 grade point average. That's that's an incredible grade point average. Correct. And if like everybody, you know, can feel minor distractions or something. But I mean, if it was like that detrimental. Would they really have that high of a grade point average? Yeah, that's geometry then. If it's that detrimental, then they're in geometry and they don't have a four point out. And they do need to put and Jordan's over there nodding because he's he was in my geometry class. They do need to put their phones away more because they don't have a four point out. Uh, that, that, all the kids in the building need pulled over and over and over and over yeah. and over. So, so I think I think fine. if I'm just to kind of like mediate that part of this conversation, what I'm hearing is is that regardless of academic performance is problematic in the classroom and interrupts instruction. Regardless of academic performance. That's what I heard. Again, I'm not getting put in sides on that. I'm just saying that's what I heard. And, and I'll just reiterate again, Robert Fool's order, it's not a debate. We're not going back and forth who is and who is the right. If you have an opinion, feel free to share your opinion. The opinion is being reported. We have to take the opinion in. Nobody's fighting back and forth about it. It's not, it's not a fight. Right? May I ask okay. a question? Can I just ask a question? Sure. Just an uh, implementation question. Because, I mean, and I, I was this kid. I mean, you go make a rule, you know, we're going to have some fun figuring out how to get around it. Um, I'm already trying to, you know, not plant myself. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Somehow, so let's say we take the phones at the door. What and what you know, because one of the things we're worried about are fights being reported in these things. How do we feel now about GoPros? How do we feel about digital cameras? Uh, you know, kids will, you know, kid, I mean, they I, they love taking photos, you know. I mean, so how like where what what happens next? Like in the implementation of this. And I, I know maybe we already got to this with the watch. Maybe you're not there yet. But I do think that we have to start thinking about like 
there's a lot of workarounds for all of these things. And I think you could almost drive yourself like nuts playing whack-a-mole. You know, uh, and so, and, and again, if the info, if the enforcement isn't happening, there's there's no point in doing it. And so I, I just, I think it's just, you have to think about like, you know, and I'm sure you have, but I mean, I can just see, you know, I mean, if, if kids want to film fights, they're going to, they're going to, you know, I mean, we're going to have 35 millimeter cameras back in here again. Uh, so I don't know, like how, you know, what's, what's achievable and what isn't, I think is, is just a fun thing. So I'm going to answer the question and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak. I apologize. So my, my only response to that is this, is that if we don't have parent buy-in yeah. and if we don't have everybody working together in community, yeah. it doesn't matter what we try. Right. And that's that truly, we can talk about workarounds and I, I don't disagree with you. Right. Like we've all found workarounds for everything that we experienced in school right. moving forward. What I will say is, is that if we don't, even regardless of where this goes, if we don't have parent buy-in and parent parent camaraderie in that, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. And my question is really just to kind of on all of this, because you say it's not as one, but you know, if there's not a phone recording it, what if we the fights are still happening, that uh, the bullying is still happening? I'm more concerned about how do we address those things because those are the things that are impacting our environment as well. So I guess, you know, what what are we doing about that? That's still happening because I feel like those things are better on the physical things. So my answer to that is if you spent two hours, an hour, half an hour back where the administrative offices are, you would see a revolving door of kids of us trying to get ahead of things of us mediating problems, of us like, hey, I heard something that was brewing and what's going on with you? How are you doing today? What's going on? We do that, honestly, ad nauseum. I like it really, at the end of the day, I'm exhausted because we spend so much time trying to get ahead of things so that it does yield that positive, okay. And honestly, there are some situations where we don't hear about it. I'll give you, I'll give you an anecdote. This was a cell phone issue, right? Two kids in a classroom arguing over text. Nobody knew. The bell rang. They walked out of the classroom and started fighting immediately. Now, if we had heard this was happening, what we probably would have done, which is what we've done a million times over, is, hey, come on, three, let's, let's go have this conversation. Come on, young man, let's go have this conversation. So we would talk that out. Here's where the problem is. But we, if we don't get ahead of that because we don't know about it, then that's where the fight happens. Unfortunately, because in that situation that happened over text and it was a group chat, everybody knew but the adults. So that we couldn't get ahead of that one. And if I'm honest, in every school I've ever worked in, there's always been fights, there's always been conflicts. That's always been the case. What I have noticed that is different is that the victimization of people in those fights is continuous. Because now it's the fight is seen, and then it's shared around the cafeteria at lunch. People will airdrop it to anybody whose airdrop is on. Then it goes to the hallway. Then there are pockets of kids in transition. Ooh, check this out. And so then it becomes even bigger. So when those kids come back from whatever suspension, whatever mediation, whatever, it's, oh, I heard y'all got in the fight. And I heard y'all want to fight again. And it becomes its own new animal. Now, we do our best to try to get ahead of it. And I can tell you that I think we're pretty darn successful doing so. However, we can't fix them all. And I want to piggyback on that, that we are doing a good job of changing the culture. That teachers, students, they want to be in a safe environment. So if they know that something is going on, they're quick to sit there and tell a teacher or to tell a staff member as well. So they, they want to be here. They want, they want everything to be safe. So like you said, we can't uh, avoid the everyday fights that we might see, but we can definitely say over the years, the number of fights have reduced. Now, again, those fights that are happening are because of the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just have a question about um, the, the policy of the front door thing. 
um, you know, I want to say thank you guys for listening. And I understand the uh, pain that Bones put on teachers. Um, and I, I just, I have a question on that because it concerns me as a student um, that when it comes to, there's already a bunch of chaos at security check-in some days as it is. Um, and there's already things that can get smuggled in through that chaos because kids already know a way around it. And as someone like me who can, who already applies to these things, and I will put my phone in the thing if y'all were to ever actually implement that, um, there's still gonna be kids that are able to get their phones through. They're still gonna have their phones. And I feel that that's my like that's my concern as a student is that if y'all implement it, we're still gonna have the same problem. So I just want to know exactly how it's gonna get implemented. Um, I I wouldn't personally want the front thing in, but if if you can give me like an exact good reason as to why you, you are really confident on how it would work, I, I'd love to hear it. I can't give you that. And the reason why I can't give you that is, is, as I said before, it would take some time for me to go to Dixon and find out what makes theirs a hot mess and, and, and try to, what's the, what's the mousetrap thing? I can't think of the name. How to build a better mousetrap. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how do you build a better mousetrap? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make the same mistakes they make. Yeah. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what they have, the information they have, and I'm going to learn from that. Yeah, to try to, not to And yeah. not I, we, sorry. I'm saying I only because I'm the one speaking. But like, I can't <laughs> give you like, here's the solid plan. Yeah. Because the only solid plan I could give you is copying someone else's plan, who as we heard is a hot mess. Like, are you, are you and, confident in it though? Am I confident? Again, am I confident in we could find something that could work? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am confident that if I, if we put heads in a room and have a conversation, I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I'm old enough to know a time when there wasn't an internet. Yeah. If you had told me <laughs> I, could, I could talk to somebody that's not even here, like I would have been like, that's cool. How are you going to do that? So I know the smart people got together and said, here's how we're going to make this work. Okay. So I am confident that that could happen in a positive way. At this point, I don't have that because, again, it's just one person talking. And as district rep that represents both Dixon and the high school, I do want to name, we said hot mess about Dixon a couple times. And uh, personally, from an administrative perspective, I believe that the cell phone collection policy at Dixon has gotten much, much better from day one. Uh, and so I know that there are some people that may categorize it as hot mess. There may be some people that don't. As an administrator, I do not. As a parent, I do not. And I don't want anybody leaving this this meeting think that it's a default defined thing that we all believe that the collection policy of Dixon is a hot mess. So we Apologies don't. to my Dixon people. Let me right. let me also yeah. like let me yeah. as the one who has described it that way <laughs> is is that last that in its inception it was not executed well, and there were a lot of learnings that could have been taken from it, and that I would certainly and when I, and, and I was asking how are you going to take those learnings? Not that it is still, because my children are no longer at Dixon, and so they are here. And like I've said, the administration and team has been excellent to work with. Like, I understand the challenges. So I, it's, it's a matter of how are you gonna, if you're going to go that route, how are you gonna take learnings from the experience? Gotcha. So I'm switching heads now. Um, so I just wanted to kind of, I think this is a good dialogue. I think I can speak confidently on behalf of the board. We wanted this kind of conversation. We wanted to hear what the community had to say. We wanted to hear what the parents had to say, teachers had to say, because sometimes we get into a room and we just want to know, well, what, what, what are you saying out there? Like, what's really happening? What's the issue? What's the concern? What is the pros, the cons? So I do appreciate everyone that came out. It's late. I know we're hungry. You're probably tired and ready to go. So I I do appreciate that. And hopefully we can wrap it up in five, 10 minutes because I'm hungry. Can I just ask one? Wait. Hold on. Um, and then I'll also say, I know someone made a comment. This is not being implemented tomorrow. It's not being implemented like this month. This is just a conversation to get it started to get the ideas, the thoughts, the data. And then yes, the board would say, oh, you know what? This policy sounds great if we do it this way, or you know what? It, it's just not gonna work. We should try to redo something. So I want everyone to be comfortable to know, you know, nothing's being done tomorrow. Your kids are still good, they're still safe, but we appreciate you coming out tonight and at least speaking and giving your opinion and your voice and your concerns. It's greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. And please feel free to email the board anytime you have a concern, a question, 
you're not sure about something, that is what we're here for. We're here to make sure we feel confident and they're here to make sure the administration team feels confident as well. So thank you all for coming. It's definitely appreciated. Yeah. yeah, just a quick question or maybe something to consider when you take up all the data. I know Elizabeth, when she first spoke, that there still are a lot of parents. I know for me, my last one is here. He's in 10th grade. I think it would be great for him not to have access to his vote in his actual classes, but it is very concerning for me that he will not in the building the whole day. So some of us have been here when things were very, very, very scary and unsafe. Um, and then the world itself, you just don't know. I mean, you even look at something and yes, it ended up being a hope around the country, but when everything happened at Central, I believe last year, or maybe yeah, last year, last year. Yeah. that was terrifying. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that I was able to help my child deal with that as he got many of his very good friends go to Farm's way. So as you do that, there has to be some work with that because we really have to feel like we do have access. And this isn't something where like they could go out to the teacher. It's just the way that the world is. And then my second thing is if they don't have any cell phones, will you still be doing your social media? Right. Which I think it's been huge. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Dr. Woods started that and that made a big, big difference. And you have continued that and I'm very grateful. Yeah. So I hope the kids understand like, well, what do you mean? She's got her phone out to take pictures. That's the same thing. Exactly. Right? Exactly. exactly. She's working. So, you were studying. Right. So I hope that's really in there with the kids to realize that because that has made a huge, huge lasting and Thank you. Okay, we'll wrap it up yes. here. Last thing, safety issue. Um, I have a son who doesn't have a bus. He walks to school. He walks from school. I just told him, I said, I can't let him go when it's dark at night or dark, dark in the morning or dark at night in the winter without a phone. Um, and second of all, talking about what happens in the world, um, I was an educator when Franklin Regional had the the... Well, he used an exacto knife, so I don't know if it's stabbing anymore, but the police chief of Monroeville came to my little Catholic school and scolded or not the principal because she refused to let the children have their phone in class. And he said to her, we saved some kids because some had their phones and were able to call EMTs, the police, tell them what was happening. So I get it. Like the government said, it, this way and that way. So I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck is a great way to wrap up here. Good luck. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>